Thank you for tuning in. I'm Kenrick, a research scientist at Reality Labs Meta. On behalf of my co-authors, I'll be presenting STMG, a machine learning micro gesture recognition system for supporting thumb-based VR AR input. Current VR AR headsets now support bare hand tracking as input. Pinch is the predominant gesture used, such as for scrolling and panel navigation, accessing system commands, and locomotion. As pinch is just a single simple gesture, developers make use of additional arm motion or hand orientation to expand the pinch interaction space. With skeletal tracking micro gestures, or STMG, we increase the number of gestures users can perform with just their thumb and index fingers. We recognize micro gestures from skeletal motions generated from the egocentric cameras of MetaQuest headsets. The STMG gesture set consists of seven thumb to index micro gestures left swipe, right swipe, forward swipe, backward swipe, tap, pinch start, pinch end. Researchers have explored different types of thumb to finger micro gestures, including where the thumb makes contact on the volar or palm side of the fingers, where the thumb makes contact with the radial or thumb side of the index finger. Researchers have recognized micro gestures in a variety of ways, including using acoustic, radar, and infrared sensors. They have also attached cameras to fingers, the wrist, the chest, and shoulder. Recent work have recognized similar gestures as the STMG set, where sensing is done with wearable rings. At work, we recognize slightly larger, discrete thumb swipes and taps from the skeletal motion track directly from on-headset egocentric cameras. The directional thumb swipes in STMG are arranged similarly to a directional pad. Swiping on the radial side of the index finger is much like swiping on the surface of a smartphone. Our swipes are 2 to 3 centimeters in length to make recognition more reliable from vision-based skeletal tracking. Here we can see how these discrete directional swipes map to directional navigation of a grid. Our model also learns pinch so that it can distinguish between swipes and taps and pinches. For example, the thumb may contact near the index fingertip at the start of a right-handed right swipe. A recognizer that understands both swipes and pinches will know the gesture is a right swipe and not a pinch. This gesture set has the benefits of eating small motions, can be performed ice-free, generates self-haptics, is one-handed, and uses a familiar hand pose like a handshake or holding a game controller. Though the gestures may seem simple, there are subtle variations in how users may perform them. Here are some examples of the end of a backward swipe from different people. Notice how some people extend their index finger or dip their thumb into their palm. The angle at which the thumb moves relative to the index finger can also vary from person to person. Writing a heuristic that captures all the different types of motion is difficult. Thus, to recognize these gestures and generalize to users, we take a machine learning approach. Our training pipeline is straightforward. We use join angles as input features to a temporal convolutional network to generate gesture predictions. To train a model, we collect gesture sequences. We collect the sequences from 228 participants, which we split to 208 for training and 20 for testing. For each participant, we collected approximately 100 gesture sequences. We also collected 20 negative sequences containing no gestures. Our collection setup generates hand tracking from motion capture and hand tracking from monochrome cameras. We also calibrate the space so the participant can aim a raycast cursor at the 2D monitor for certain sequences. Our tasks are designed so we know what gestures the participant is supposed to make. This allows us to apply loose heuristics to the motion capture hand tracking that anticipate and recognize the gestures. These heuristics enforce certain gesture requirements but are also relaxed enough to capture user variation and provide real-time feedback to participants. To capture realistic and varied sequences, we had users perform four types of collection tasks. First are swipe and tap sequences where participants use swipes to traverse a grid. Second are sequences with raycast aim and pinch followed by a swipe. Third are raycast aiming and then making a gesture twice. Raycast aiming adds variety by forcing the user to reposition their hand. Fourth are pinch and drags to help distinguish the start and end of pinches.
This example sequence is a sequence of four right swipes, followed by two backward swipes, then ending with a tap. To annotate, we relied on our motion capture system and heuristic recognition to do an initial annotation pass. If the annotation matched the expected sequence, we considered the annotation successful. If not, we made manual checks. We also collected negative samples to teach the model what motions are not gestures. Negative samples largely include emotions that are almost gestures, such as sliding the thumb along the surface of the index finger or hovering the thumb around the index finger. These motion, in essence, carve out the negative space around the positive gestures. With our collected data, we can begin training. As our gestures only rely on the coordination of the thumb and index fingers, our input features are eight joint angles, four from each finger. When training, we apply CTC loss to positive sequences, CE loss to negative sequences, and a temporal alignment loss to pinch sequences. CTC loss allows the model to learn the gesture alignment without the need for frame-wise ground truth labels. For example, if we have a gesture sequence, right, 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 backward, backward, tap, CTC will consider the prediction correct if the order of predicted outputs is also right, 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 backward, backward, tap. By training with a wide variety of sequences, the model by necessity will learn the gesture alignment. CTC loss has its limitations. It can be lazy when predicting pinch start and pinch end. Since pinch end always comes after pinch start, it can collapse the labels into adjacent frames. The temporal alignment loss adds a penalty if the frame-wise ground truth and the predictions are not aligned within a few frames of each other. This prevents label collapsing by forcing the network to learn the proper locations of pinch start and pinch end. We also add data augmentation to add variety to the training sequences. Since we work on top of skeletal tracking, we can interpolate or manipulate the joint angles, such as slowing or speeding up sequences, and curling or uncurling the index finger to vary the amount of finger curl. Taking the early example sequence, a model trained on monochrome hand tracking produces this prediction heat map. We had a holdout test set of 20 users. Our model achieved an F1 score of 95.1% across the seven gestures from the monochrome hand tracking. The F1 score per gesture was fairly consistent, roughly 95%, except for TAP, which had a lower 90.8% F1 score. Thumb tap was the worst performing gesture. Two possible reasons for this include TAP is a fairly small motion that may be impacted by hand tracking quality. Tracking jitter or tracking not resolving with the motion may lead to recognition errors. TAP also had the fewest training samples, about half that a pinch, which may bias the model. Increasing the quantity and variety of TAP samples may help. For further details on results, we refer you to the paper. We were able to run the STMG model on MetaQuest headsets, which enabled us to explore the use cases in real time. We mapped TAP to teleport, left swipe to turn left, and right swipe to turn right. To reduce instances of inadvertent gestures, we also require the users to be in a handshake orientation when performing locomotion operations. Here, a user locomotes around a virtual museum and interacts with virtual objects at various stations. When interacting with virtual objects, we ignore any potential microgesture locomotion actions. Compared STMG to a pinch-based method and a controller-based method. The pinch-based method starts from the hand in an L-shaped pose. While the palm is facing up or down, the pinch will teleport, orienting the palm to face to the side, then pinching to the left or right of the reference point will snap turn left or right. With the controller, pushing the joystick forward will aim the teleportation arc, and releasing the joystick will teleport to the end of the arc. Pushing the joystick left or right will snap turn left or right. Out of 24 participants, 17 preferred STMG microgestures, 6 preferred controllers, and 1 preferred pinch. Like a directional pad, discrete swipes map naturally to discrete directional navigation. Here, we explore how discrete STMG might map to continuous scrolling. When a swipe has occurred, we use the hand tracking to determine the thumb velocity and map the speed of the swipe to the speed of the scroll. Thus, slow individual swipes can produce short scrolls. 
To generate faster scrolls, fast consecutive swipes can accumulate scroll speed and produce long scrolls. Though using the speed of the swipes does allow for some control and very fast scrolling, it is still difficult to fine-tune the scroll position. Recognizing true continuous thumb sliding would allow for more precise trackpad style scrolling, which is subject to future work. A summary of our design guidelines and lessons learned are as follows. Design gestures that accommodate the tracking quality. Balance user variation with gesture specificity. Design collection tasks that make data easy to annotate. Collect negative samples that carve out the negative space around the gestures. Leverage CTC loss to minimize the need of frame-wise labels. Use frame-wise ground truth labels if CTC loss is collapsing predictions. Add data augmentation to fill gaps in the collected data. Use heuristics to filter the model predictions as needed. Thank you for your time. We hope our work provided insights into how we train a robust gesture model working on top of skeletal tracking and how micro gestures could expand VR-AR interactions.